It's funny when you bring up Down syndrome, you can always tell who's never been around it in their lives. You know what I mean? Like if I tell people, if I'm like, yeah, I have family members with Down syndrome, people that have never been around it are always like, oh. Like Down syndrome is the fucking end of the world. Like, oh. Are they okay? Are they doing okay? It's like, they're doing better than everybody I know. <laughs> the only dudes I know are having a good time pretty consistently. Sorry they're not on fucking Adderall and anti-anxiety like the rest of us. They're on fucking Capri Suns. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. It's funny, this is literally the fourth subject I've attempted to do a video on today. I was dying coughing earlier, and then I just had a bunch of horrible food. <laughs> but I guess it soaked up all of the stomach acid or something, uh, because now I can actually talk. So I did a community post on the other two, uh, or three subjects. But uh, two of them are related to this. Before I start, First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. So uh, this is Skankfest. <laughs> it is a comedy festival that I literally just heard about about two hours ago. Uh, I have a friend who is uh, there, and uh, I guess it starts today and lasts through the weekend in uh, Las Vegas. Now the uh, list is fucking ridiculous. Like, so for the last year or so, I've been really into comedy. More specifically, <coughs> stand-up comedians on podcasts. I think that is like the, that's the sweet spot. Because being actually funny for 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour, that's very difficult. But to be on a podcast with a couple of other comedy professionals and you're just trying to be amusing... That is much easier to succeed at. So I just find them fun. I don't watch the whole podcasts. I just watch the highlights on TikTok. And I've really become interested in the comedy scene and the industry um, in the way that I used to be interested in comic uh, books. There's a lot of really great comedians uh, out there. And um, uh, this gives me an excuse to talk about Shane Gillis. So Shane Gillis is this guy. You probably know him as the guy who got canceled a few years ago. He was going to be on SNL and then he got canceled before he even started. And that was like 2019. So I think like most people, I did not hear about him until then. And it was just sad. It was just like, first of all, it's like he uh, said uh, racist jokes about Asians. And I was like, Okay, I guarantee it's like the most lame ass, not non-offensive, but not offensive. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like it was they're just dumb. So finally I watched the 4 minutes that got him fired from SNL and like first of all, he's on a podcast. The other guy is talking most of the time and it's like really softball stuff like Chinese food isn't that good. They put MSG in it. It's like, the fuck? That's it? <coughs> but it was just depressing. Because it was like, okay, that was probably his dream. And that would have been a great opportunity. So now he's going to do like a couple of appearances at different clubs that will do good. And then he will fade into obscurity. And he'll just always regret that he made those jokes. And this will kind of destroy his whole career. And he's doing better than ever. Now, I had seen his stuff, little clips here and there over the years. And I have a couple things to say. Number one, I didn't think he was that funny. Every clip I saw was just generic bro humor, like the most basic bro frat humor imaginable. The other thing is that like, I know everyone has, <coughs> you're supposed to say like, SNL sucks and everything they do is terrible. Their topical stuff is awful. Weekend update is excruciating. But when they do just like random, just random humor, just a funny idea, I think they've actually had a really strong cast over the last year, or 10 years. Mikey Day, uh, Cicely Strong, all the other people I'm blanking on. It's not like a cast where you need to know everyone's name. You just see them and say, oh, they're good. I like them. I like their stuff. 
He does not fit in with any of them. He would have been on for one season and then probably another season just as a writer, not as a performer, and then he was gone. He just, he doesn't fit the rhyme scheme at all. And then something fucking amazing happened. In the last year or so, he got good. He got really good. Uh, his appearances on podcasts, uh, his stand-up routine, he did a special, and this stuff was crazy. So I became like almost like kind of like obsessed with him. And I'm like, what 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 happened? Like, what is what is going on? And I finally figured it out. Cancel culture improved him. Now, cancel culture did what it always attempts to do, which is to drive you to homelessness, hoping that you will kill yourself because you do, or they believe you do, have different political beliefs. That's it. They're trying to get you to murder yourself, um, to eliminate their <coughs> political opposition. That's what's so funny and sad when they say something like, oh, Louis C.K., he's still around? What you meant to say was, we did everything we could to get him to kill himself, and he didn't, which is disappointing for us. That's what you're saying. So, um, and this, uh, this comedy fest, like, okay, so now, first of all, it's not a, we were canceled. Like, they have those type of fests and tours. It's like, canceled comedy tour. Too hot for TV. Like, that's shit. I did a video a month or two ago about how political comedy on the right and the left is uniformly terrible. Actually, on the right, it's even worse. Um... But this is, this is not that. I would almost call this like an algorithm comedy fest where it's like, oh, do you like Tim Dillon? Well, if you like Tim Dillon, you probably also like Ari Shafir. And it just goes like that. Oh, if you like Ryan Long, uh, you would probably also like, I'm trying to find the people like that I watch their stuff like every single day. Well, that's not fair. Danny Polishuk is like his... Kurt Metzger, right there. Kurt Metzger. If you like Ryan Long, you will probably like Kurt Metzger. Um, now, lots of these people were canceled, but lots of them weren't. Half of these names I don't recognize at all. But I'm saying, like, a lot of my favorite comedians are here. Um, and I did a video a couple days ago about... Uh, Get a job. Just get a job. If you work in comics, get a job. It is not stable, and it has been made less stable. And I and other uh, um, <coughs> channels have talked about uh, comic pros facing homelessness, experiencing homelessness. And you might say, oh, you're talking about this person. It's more than one. It's more than two. It's more than three. It's like every time you find another one... Somebody will send you a screenshot and be like, this person's homeless too. Like, how many comic book pros are homeless? We don't know. Um, but seeing this, for some reason, all the TikToks that get recommended to me, like the one that's officially like promoting Skankfest doesn't get promoted. But this is a massive, massive success with a lot of people who got a lot better and some got worse. Roseanne Barr is not good now, but a lot of these people got better, Shane Gillis, because of the essentially torture they were put through by cancel culture. Now, here's my thesis. I honestly think that cancel culture needs to sue itself because there's this weird kind of circuit where they kind of encourage and threaten each other a couple days ago a bunch of people were going in on comic skate and i was like did anything happen like what i don't know anything that happened it feels like they're just suddenly talking about it but then they were castigating people who work with cg or cg adjacent people but then they had to admit that they had done so in the past but it was before they knew they were bad so it doesn't count and this person might know they're bad, but if they do, it's too late. And they're all like threatening each other, but encouraging other, encouraging each other to do it more. Meanwhile, they're all broke. 
they're broke, they're depressed, they're suicidal, they are on the verge of homeless or homeless, and they're being encouraged by these older pros who already made it. They're doing fine. They've got their uh, retirement set up, but they do have some grievances. And you know what? There's some terminally online, unstable people who will absolutely, for a few attaboys, atta girls, atta they thems a year, and maybe $20, 50, maybe a low couple hundred dollars to their GoFundMes every year, you can buy yourself a foot soldier who will fight your political proxy war. I mean, if you just, one of the things people always say, it's like, oh, why aren't you like you were in 2017? That shit didn't work. It just entrenched people and it basically made Heather Antos unfireable. So I stopped. But like, how do I say this? I just had a goal that was unsuccessful, but then obviously publishing was very successful. SJWs created cancel culture that hurt a lot of people in the short term, a lot of people in the short term, but destroyed SJWs in the long term. Like these SJWs, they've never been doing worse than right now. Like ever in their lives. And they weren't doing great before. But when they decided to spend five, ten years trying to destroy their political enemies, or more likely the political enemies of some higher ups to try to curry favor with them, like, holy shit. Imagine a gun that fires all of its bullets backwards. Like, fuck. Like, y'all did this to yourself. Like, you should be pointing fingers at each other. It's like, well, you told me to do that. Well, you told me not to work with them. Like, bro, you guys have fucked your lives up. You guys have destroyed yourselves to, uh, how would I say, appease each other while threatening each other. Like, I saw one guy, like, oh God, they're just like, I did a book with this person, but I didn't know they were bad, but I know they're bad now, but that's no excuse for this other person. Even if they don't know, ignorance is not an excuse. Like, what, what were you trying to do? Hey, sorry, some people are not going to be voting straight ticket Democrat every single election. You are going to have to learn to live with it eventually. Ha I bet half of these people are or were Democrats, Democrats, before they were pushed towards the right, not the far right, just probably the center right, by being tortured by psychopaths on behalf of angry older men who are financially stable but don't want to fight their own wars, which is a tradition throughout of all of human history. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, SJWs destroyed themselves while trying to destroy others. They caused a lot of problems for the short term. But almost, almost everybody who was canceled, uh, specifically over the last five years, almost everybody has not only recovered, but they have done better. And I'm not just talking about, oh, this is my special about being canceled. I'm talking like five years down the line. They're just better comedians. And also... People got kind of like ostracized from really shitty peer groups to much better ones. Like if you're trying to do just like the, the total mainstream, you're just going on all those trashy uh, uh, talk shows, just kissing ass. And then when you get canceled, you got to hang out with the riffraff. But you know what? The riffraff isn't that bad. They're okay funny, but holy shit. If they just bounce ideas off of each other every single day, they get a lot, a lot fucking better. It is amazing. Uh, so SJWs, I mean, I was, I was having a talk with myself uh, earlier today. I was like, are you happy? And I was like, I'm not sad. In a specific sense, no, I do not feel sorry for these people. They did it to themselves. 
in the broader sense, they're still people. So I feel sorry for them in that regard. It's funny, I have two friends I was discussing one of these situations with. And one of them was like, fuck that person, I hope they burn in hell. And the other one was like, you know, playing a harp. It's like, Jesus loves them. It's like, I'm somewhere in the middle. Like, it's funny when it's not stuff that's like tragic. It's funny when someone, you know, trips. It's not funny when they die. Um, and it's getting really serious for these people. I mean, I mean, the comic book industry has destroyed itself. And a lot of these people who supported cancel culture, yeah, there's older people who secured the bag financially for retirement, but there's a lot of people in their 20s and 30s that fell for it, encouraged it, helped it, and now they're trying to make a career in an industry that they fucking destroyed. Meanwhile, comedy, and I remember reading articles about comedy like six years ago, and it's like, this Brooklyn uh, comedy fest, and then people are pointing out, like, these comedians were not comedians, they were activists, and they wanted applause, not laughter. These motherfuckers just want laughter. They just want you to laugh, and, like, that's it. Like, some of the riffs these guys go on, oh my god, the... Shane Gillis, he was on some podcast. He did a riff on the Wachowski sisters. Have you ever heard something so funny that you don't laugh because you are admiring what a good joke it is? And it was just on the fly. They were just riffing. I was like, that's some of the funniest shit I heard in my entire life. Specifically the stuff he said about uh, astronauts. That was fuck. That was hilarious. Um, and I'm just saying, like, all you, all you did, all you did was make your enemies, it's like that thing they say about, like, weights in prison. It's like, do we really need stronger criminals? Like, <laughs> that's what you did. You just made stronger criminals, stronger enemies, you fucking dipshits. But honestly, I think this is the time where you guys start really like looking at each other it's like bro you led me down the garden path like you better help me out or you you might owe me some shit because you encouraged this shit for years i'm mentally ill you're an asshole asshole has a higher level of you know responsibility you encouraged me to do this and it completely fucking destroyed my life but uh, anyway, before I go, I kind of wanted to go like through all of, I mean, you can leave right now. I'll just mention like the comedians I like. I know people, I, I never really liked Adam Carolla that much. Some of these, uh, Ari Shafir is good. I've heard he's very like volatile. Brendan Schaub is like weirdly controversial. Um, I, I never really got that that much. Brian Callen is, a, Brian Callen is a guy who wasn't that funny. He was okay. Definitely got funnier over time after being uh, canceled. Danny Polishuk, he's the not really fat but looks fat compared to a skinny guy comedy partner of uh, Ryan Long. He's excellent. Kurt Metzger's been funny forever. Who do I know? Who are these other people? This is kind of new to me. This kind of reminds me of like my first year of being into comics. Like a lot of these people, I just don't know. I literally just, uh, what was that line from? Uh, Scott Pilgrim. I just found out there was good music one week ago. Something like that. Um, but uh, I saw all these people I loved and now I can't find them. I'm, I'm choking under the pressure of going through this uh, uh, Pauly Shore. Let's see. This last one. See, I, I, it should. Tim Dillon. Amazing. TJ Miller. Amazing. Shane Gillis, my favorite comedian right now and then they have my previous favorite uh comedian i mean he's very very close second and he's been my favorite for like five years ryan long just absolutely uh amazing but um you done goofed you tried to get a bunch of strangers to kill themselves because dude if you see shane gillis's china routine that was just him riffing on a podcast bro that shit would not have gotten you in trouble in the third grade. 
maybe the teacher would be like, don't you have something better to do? Like, just go ahead and wrap it up. Like, this, like, oh, they put MSG in the food. It wasn't Shane Gillis. It was the other guy. It was just, like, shit. It was just, like, a, a lame root, like, just a, a lame little bit of riffing. But, uh, oh, Harlan Williams, he's uh, been around forever. He's hilarious. So, um, uh, anyway, um, <coughs> you guys destroyed yourself, fucking idiots. You made your enemy stronger and yourself weaker. And not just weaker, like, complete collapse, ab abject poverty, suicidal, homeless, mentally ill. The hell? You guys are a curse upon yourselves. Huh. Video title, right there. Before I go, First Kill Graphic Novel link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.